Hello! In this video, we are going to analyze the physics of the Minecraft world, and I'm going to explain what I think is the most likely explanation for what the Minecraft world actually is. I'm also going to refer to the world setting of my Minecraft Airship Pirates series, and how these assumptions figure into that storyline. Now, you might say it's ridiculous to try to apply physics analysis to a video game, but to that, I would say two things. First, a sufficiently disciplined mind can find order in any kind of chaos, which, if you think about it, is either extremely frightening or possibly our only hope as a species. Second, I would say there's fairly compelling evidence that the universe itself is a video game. I mean, if you're going to tell me that some events don't happen unless they are observed, then I'm going to tell you that that's a great way to conserve CPU resources. So in this video, I'm not interested in simple explanations like, it's that way because they wrote the game that way. That's the easy way out. And that's such a boring view of the Minecraft universe. Anyway, let's start with the basics. Here we have my ultra-high-tech gravity testing structure, and Bob here has volunteered to assist us with the gravity testing. <laughs> oh, Bob's such a kidder. Now, I'm going to throw this switch, and we're going to time how long it takes you to hit the bottom. Don't be such a wimp. Okay, here we go. Don't worry, Bob will be fine. At the bottom, I put a nice big water... Oh, I knew I forgot something. Anyway, after extensive testing, and referring to the data from other fine researchers, we find that gravity on the Minecraft world is about three times greater than standard Earth gravity. However, terminal velocity, or the highest speed you fall before the wind prevents you from going any faster, is actually lower. This means that while Minecraft's gravity is higher, its atmosphere must be much more dense than Earth's. This basic fact explains a lot in Minecraft. As one brief example, that's why the airship is the dominant travel form in the Airship Pirates series. It's also why arrows are still in widespread use long after the invention of TNT. I'll go into more detail on the atmosphere in my next Minecraft physics video, but for now, let's find out more about the basic shape and size of the Minecraft world. We know the world of Minecraft is extraordinarily wide, at least 60 million meters on a side, about half again the entire circumference of the Earth. It may be even wider, but that's the furthest distance it is possible to travel. Right now I'm standing in roughly the center of the reachable Minecraft world. I'm going to jump into this rather odd looking pod that flies using the Movecraft plugin that I've been working on. This pod will now teleport me 30 million meters south so I can show you what the edge of the world looks like. And just like that, we're there. Take that, Einstein. Now, if I try to go any further south, I hit this barrier. I'm trying to move forward, but I can't. It's hard for you to see the barrier because it's invisible. But rather than expect you to just believe me about this invisible thing, let me show you an experiment. Like any good experiment, it involves copious amounts of explosives. First of all, look at the mechanism on this machine. See how the redstone wire is distorted? I believe that is due to the barrier. It's so powerful that it somehow distorts space-time in such a way that it makes things look stretched like that. Uh, let me turn this thing on. Now, you can see as the TNT explodes, it is annihilating the landscape all except in the direction of the invisible barrier. In spite of the huge amount of energy and all that explosive, the barrier completely negates any damage. So you can see we have this nice clean demarcation showing us where that barrier is. Okay, another thing to notice is that the angle of the sun has not changed by even one degree. Normally, traveling north or south on a large sphere like planet Earth will cause the angle to the sun to change as your latitude changes, right? It could be explained by the Minecraft world being a sphere so large, 30 million meters isn't far enough around the sphere to make any difference. But I don't think that's reasonable. The gravity isn't even close to high enough, for one thing. I think the best explanation is a non-traditional planet shape, or a so-called megastructure. My first thought went to a Dyson shell, or a ring world type structure. The problem with that is that the Minecraft sun still has an obvious rise and set cycle, and I couldn't explain that with those models. But there is a shape that does fit our observations. Well, let me show you. 
So we'll hop back into my teleporter pod, and I'll hit this control and take you to a model of what I believe the Minecraft world really looks like. Unlike a Dyson Scheller ring world, which envelops or encircles its sun and is not stable in relation to its star, this loop structure can orbit independently and is inherently stable. The rising and setting of the sun is caused by the rotation of the loop, which also causes artificial gravity for the inhabitants living on the interior of the loop. In this model, the loop is at a slight angle to the sun. That prevents it from being in its own shadow. The scale here is 7,500k to each Minecraft block, and the loop is a little more than 2 million k in diameter. That figure comes from assuming the Minecraft world architects, and I think we can start referring to Minecraft architects, since there is no way this structure is natural. Anyway, assuming the Minecraft architects sought to create roughly Earth-like conditions. This may seem an extraordinary claim, but there is secondary supporting data. While the Minecraft world is exceptionally wide, it is also very thin. Only a few dozen meters below the surface, you reach the bottom of the world. Dig any deeper, and you are hurled by the centrifugal force of the loop out off into space, where presumably you die a horrible explodey death. Another supporting data is the fact that the bottom layer of the Minecraft world is this super strong material we call bedrock, which is exactly what you need to make this orbiting loop megastructure feasible. Something has to keep the loop together under the enormous stress its rotation causes. Exact measurements of bedrock strength is difficult, but I have another experiment for you. This one involves roughly 1,000 times the total explosive force of the last one, so you know it's a good experiment. These are the infamous white missiles of the Minecraft Airship Pirate series. By comparing crater size to Earth weapons, they are the equivalent of 5 to 10 kiloton nuclear devices each, and here we have four of them. Let's see what happens when we focus all of their destructive power on this one small block of bedrock. As you can see, it vaporized all the rock it was sitting on, yet the bedrock is completely unharmed. This seems to be the perfect material to form the backbone of our theoretical loop world. Here's some quick math for you. This loop has a surface area more than 700 times greater than the Earth, and yet consumes less than 1 30th of the material our planet does. If you want a lot of space at a low building cost, this is probably the shape that you'll use. I think we've proven beyond reasonable doubt that the Minecraft world is some kind of artificial megastructure. Its exact size is just speculation on my part, but I think it's clear that someone built this thing. So that begs the question, what happened to the Minecraft architects? Where are they now? Let's go to a model of the Minecraft world's orbit, according to available data. Close to the answer, lie in what many people have erroneously called the moon. The gravitational pull of the loop would be negligible, so it is unlikely to be an actual moon. Further, if you watch it, you will see that the object is always exactly opposite the sun. So we can tell that the loop must be spinning in between this object and the sun, always keeping them at the same angle relative to it. There is an orbit that allows this, and it makes perfect sense for our artificial megastructure theory. That is the L1 Lagrange point. The L1 Lagrange point between a planet and a star is a point where the pull of the planet is roughly counteracted by the orbit and the pull of the star. It's a relatively stable point that's a good place to put artificial satellites. The loop would be vulnerable to asteroid collisions, as its gravity is negligible and it would have little or no magnetic field to protect it. The Lagrange point is a logical place to keep it protected somewhat from that danger. So, what we may have thought was a moon is in fact a planet. I postulate that just as people from Earth have placed some of our artificial satellites in the Earth-Sun L1 point, so the Minecraft architects built the Minecraft world in the L1 point between their own planet and the Sun. So the moon is probably where the architects are from. Or were
far from, perhaps. Because if you look at it, you can see that the, the planet we see goes through what looks like phases. Except that it can't be phases like Earth's moon goes through, since those are caused by the changing angle between the moon and the sun, and for the Minecraft world, that angle never changes. The most reasonable explanation that I can think of is that half of the planet is covered in ash, or some climactic ejecta from a terrible collision or explosion. The light and dark coloration patterns we observe on this planet are likely caused by this material covering an entire hemisphere of the planet's surface and darkening it. As the planet rotates, the patterns change, giving it those phases we see. While the details are elusive, I think it is clear something terrible happened there. A war ended by some horrible doomsday weapon? An experiment gone terribly wrong, perhaps? We may never know. Again, I think there are clues hidden in the Minecraft world if you know where to look. Endermen, for example. Could they be the creations of the architects? Carrying out orders millennia old that have been perverted by time? Were they intended to carry out maintenance on the loop? Is that why they keep acting like they're building something, yet never seem to get anything done? Why do they react so violently to being seen? Perhaps they were programmed to carry out their orders in the background, never being seen. And over the millennia, their corrupt programming has led them to destroy whatever sees them. Who knows? Anyway, I will leave you now to speculate yourselves on what the answers might be. I hope you've enjoyed this. If people like it, I do have plans for another I could make that would delve more into the atmosphere, weather, and why the weapons of Minecraft and the Airship Pirate series makes perfect sense for the Minecraft world. Thank you for your time. If you've enjoyed this, I would encourage you to subscribe. Goodbye for now.